Hi, I'm Justin, G0KSC of the G0KSC.co.uk website and also in of antennas. Uh, this is now part four of the Easy NEC uh, tutorial. And this time after finishing off with three and showing the um, basis of uh, antenna uh, configurations, uh, plots, and also the wires window within the Nile element Yagi, we're going to open up this time and experiment with some stacking um, and also placing the antenna above ground with the latter uh, first off. So here we are with our uh, software opened and running a plot with the antenna um, showing the azimuth plane. When we're stacking above ground we're going to be more interested in the elevation plane plot. Um, and also when we stack above ground uh, the whilst the elevation plot will show from a sweep uh, this is still in free space at the moment if you try to do a, a simulation with just the azimuth plot it won't work you need to do a 3 d uh, a 3d plot and then simulate from there or, or select from there but i'll show you how to do that in a few uh, simple steps in a moment at the moment um, here the z represents the height if we open up the view window and see the antenna here you can see that X is uh, along the axis of the boom Y is the axis of the elements themselves uh, with the center of the element here going to Y and Z is the height so at the moment Z is at zero now if I wanted to test this at uh, um, 10 meters above ground I could go through here and start adjusting all of these uh, and adding them 10 uh, meters above ground uh, one at a time and uh, that would be a rather lengthy process and as you can see here if I center the image by clicking here uh, this moves the one element all the way up uh, but the rest of them are still sitting on the floor so I'll undo that and I can select from here change height and you can see here that the first wire is number one and the last wire is nine and then I'll change the height on all of those to 10 meters above ground so when I do that it hasn't shown, changed in here because I've got this ticked to center the image but if I untick that and zoom out um, then you can see that the antenna is certainly above ground but uh, a point of note again uh, just for anybody that's jumping in on this video and hasn't uh, watched any of the previous ones uh, the the mouse is highlighted of course by the yellow circle and when I um, right click on my mouse you can see the the green um, circles appear now I'm right clicking on a left-handed mouse and it might be that you're using a left click uh, normally if you're using a right-handed mouse so now the antenna is placed above ground uh, when we do an elevation plot sorry first off I need to change that it's above uh, the uh, the ground type and at the moment um, we'll have high accuracy um, enabled if I do that sweep now you can see things look very different with ground influence now we've got the ground correction or, or reflections uh, involved we can see that um, uh, there are uh, multiple lobes this pattern breakup as it's called um, increases as an antenna um, is raised above ground the number of, uh, of times that splits and the number of lobes that are seen is dependent on boom length and the height above ground in terms of wavelengths. So if you want to reduce this back into one lobe, for example, the boom length needs to increase or you need to stack antennas. So you can also see here that the gain is increased, which is a result of the ground reflections or ground gain uh, that occurs when, um, when you place an antenna above ground in this way. So um, that's the first thing. If we tried to do the azimuth uh, plot, which I was mentioning earlier, we get an error. Um, and this means to be able to see the azimuth plot, we need to go into a 3D um, viewing, change it into one degree increments. It'll take a little bit longer to make the run this time. Uh, and then we have a, a three dimensional uh, model now that's shown. So this is the azimuth, uh, sorry, the elevation plot. You can see it's a little bit more steppy than the one that we run on its own. 
and that's one of the uh, the due to one of the limitations that I spoke about in the last uh, now uh, sorry in the last um, session which was the fact that um, uh, the um, step size when you're in 3d mode can only go down to one degree steps whereas if you go into a single slice mode with um, either the um, azimuth or elevation plots then it it, uh, it will go to a point one degree um, increments and then of course it shows in a much higher um, resolution in much better clarity of what it's going to look like if I go to the azimuth plot now, you can see that that's pretty much unchanged. Apart from the, the gain, the overall gain, um, the rest of it remains pretty similar. So we can get an idea of that shape from the sp free space. Um, and the gain will show slightly higher because it's not fixed on one degree steps. Uh, so back to elevation here now. So if we're going to stack, as we um, saw from the last um, or when we move the antenna above ground by 10 meters uh, we were able to just change the height so now what we can do is we can do something similar that, to that but uh, this time we're going to be copying wires so we're going to copy all nine and let's say we stack this by 2.8 meters um, looking at the uh, the length of the boom so we'll take a hit at uh, a, a stab at 2.8 meters at the moment I'm going to change this back to elevation only so it's quicker and we get our 0 0.1 degree steps and uh, then we'll have a look in the, the viewing window at how that looks and I'll pull this in a little bit here as well and you can see that's how it is uh, and also uh, to give you a perspective of how those length booms would look above ground by that amount so that's um, that's where it is so let's try that run and this is how it uh, how it would look. You can see that the, there's less lobes. There's still the pattern breakup, but there's a bit of a dip, and it comes back out again. And that is a result of the uh, elevation lobes that you get when you stack. To get a bit of indication in, uh, as to how that's looking, if we switch back to free space and then take a view of that pattern, you can see these lobes that are, are created as a result of the stack. Again, the um, the azimuth plot will be very similar to it, what it was on the, uh, the the first or the single antenna, um, and and this is an important uh, point of note. In one of the earlier videos, I spoke about the fact that you don't get something for nothing, and where your gain is coming from, the additional gain when you're stacking the antennas, it's from a compressing of the elevation plane, because you now have one antenna above the other, the elevation plane load. That would normally be um, that is that is uh, here that would normally be perhaps uh, following out from here and then around and coming back to, to this side uh, that is compressed both up and down so now the 3 dB beam width here is much smaller so if you look have a look at that the um, um, uh, the minus 3 dB beam width 19.5 degrees if I were to delete wires number 10 onward again so we go back to the single antenna and then we can see we've just got the single antenna there in free space and run the plot now um, the beam width is 42.8 so you can see it's much much wider so let's go back to uh, the compressed and run again and then we're back to the 19.5 so it's that compression that is giving you that uh, that extra gain but these are the byproduct this is the problem and if again you have um, the antenna and you're in a noisy environment or you've got houses if you imagine this being on your tower here and buildings and homes and, and what have you below this lobe here um, is um, not hugely far down onto the uh, the um, the main lobe. It's about 12 dB. So it's it's what have we got out here? Looking at 16. So you're not a, a huge amount back on um, on the the main forward lobe. So if this is looking at anything below the antenna, then you have the potential for picking up noise from that source or even delivering interference that you don't want to do. So what you can do um, 
if you were to to uh, this do just for ease of um, argument we'll delete those again um, and we'll copy the wires again but this time is we'll do it at 2.6 the closer the spacing yes you do get a little bit less gain um, but you also reduce those lobes so those um, um, those lobes now are, are much smaller as you can see but there is a, a balance point a point where uh, it starts to go the other way this one if you reduce too far will come in but this will stay here so it really depends on the environment where you are and what you want to achieve to um, where you end up and where you you finish off with your stacking so just a, a final um, one to show you is this copy back to 2.8 meters once again and then this time I'm going to add another two so I'm going to copy your wires um, two um, times uh, the uh, 2.8 so 5.6 to give us four antennas one above the other and we had 19.5 degrees for a 3 dB beam width and you can see it's almost halved again now it's at 9.4 but uh, that's uh, the main lobe, lots of smaller side lobes. And if we experiment with that spacing between the antennas, and generally the more antennas you've got spaced, the wider the spacing needs to be in between each of these sets of antennas. Otherwise you will get spike lobes here. Then by experimenting with that distance, you can get these fairly symmetrical on the way back and pull this one back here so it sits in behind these as well. So that's a crash course in uh, the um, modelling or testing of the antenna uh, with above ground effects to get ground gain and also stacking. <laughs>